This is Abra from Hoofalls and Footfalls. And I'm gonna be going live today to be talking about the anatomy of a bareback pad. So bareback pads are a very common piece of tack that we use in equine assisted activities and therapies for the mounted activities or mounted, um, or therapies incorporated mounted work. And I just wanted to take a few minutes to talk about some key points that we should be considering as an instructor uh, when we're going to choose the bareback pad that we're going to be using on our equine coworker or when we are looking to potentially purchase um, a, a bareback pad because not all bareback pads are created equal. So um, here on the screen, I do have uh, a few. Oh, I have a few examples here um, of different bareback pads, and we're going to go through and talk about um, different things on each bareback pad. And I'll let you guys know what one I use and why. And then also, um, if you're looking at purchasing other bareback pads that are maybe not the brand I personally use, just some tips and tricks to hopefully screening for a good one before you make an investment. Um, so here we have the first bareback pad that we're gonna look at. Um, the the thing that is usually number one in my mind when I go to evaluate whether or not a bareback pad is actually of good make and likely to work well on most of the horses I work with is where this girth strap is located. Um, so you can see here that even though these two pads are shaped very similarly, the location of the girth strap is very different. Um, they've done a good job in recent years of shifting the location of the girth strap and, and where it's attached to the horse, but um, previous makes and models have kind of gone along this line where the girth strap was very near the front of the pad and you did not have very much here. They've done a good job of making more where you actually have a fairly decent amount of pad up in front of this girth strap here. And why this is so important is because when you get the girth straps that are this far forward on the horse, what that's gonna do is this line and where the point of pressure is at, this is going to settle back behind the withers of your horse. So if you have your horses back underneath here and their withers come up here, um, this is going to settle back to where the pad is here and then your rider is going to want to sit here and they're way too far back behind where that center point of gravity is um, and they're getting more on that lower weaker end of the horse's back or if they actually do choose to sit more over where they should be on the horse's back then they're going to be riding almost on the front edge of that bareback pad. Um, so that's something to really think about when you're looking at a bareback pad is where is that location of the girth strap. And I try to avoid the ones that are very near the front of the pad. I want a decent amount, kind of like this one here. Um, you know, as this kind of settles back behind the withers of the horse, you're still going to have a fairly decent amount of pad in front so that as your student adjusts where they're sitting, hopefully they'll have a decent amount of pad um, underneath of their, their thigh and their seat area and they're not all the way on the front here. All right, so we've talked about location of the girth straps. Now let's talk about the width of the girth straps. Um, so one of the things that I look at as well is what is the thickness of the straps that are going to be helping to attach this pad to the horse. Um, some, they vary in size. Some of them are extremely thin. This is kind of on the thinner side. Um, this one down here is kind of thin. And then some of them are, I would say this is like medium width. And then this one's a little bit more thicker here on the bottom. So just like if we were wearing you know, a thin belt versus a thicker belt or a thin you know, backpack strap versus a thicker backpack strap, the thicker the width is the more 
area for the weight to be distributed over or the pressure that is going to be applied on the strap. So the thicker the strap you can get, usually the better and the more comfortable it is and the least likely it's going to cut into the horse. Um, wherever this girth strap is at though, be very careful that it's not on top of the horse's withers and you're cranking it down to try to get the pad to stay in place over top of, of the horse's withers and you're creating some discomfort. Um, I'll do another video on whether or not the horse's confirmation is actually a good fit for a bareback pad or if you should maybe avoid it if you've got, you know, a higher withered horse or a, a horse that has, um, you know, kind of deeper shoulders and it maybe is just not a good match, but that's another video. So location of the girth strap with the girth strap. The girths that come with the bareback pads kind of vary in quality. Um, this one right here has a thin girth that comes with it. This one has a little bit thicker width of a girth. This is probably about the thickness of a dressage girth reason. I know this is because this is the brand I own. Um, I've worked with this brand and this is a fairly thin girth. So what I do for these is I usually just swap them out for a nice wide, um, comfortable Western girth because it will attach here. And this is similar to a Western girth, um, like a Latigo setup here. So, uh, girth thickness is another one to look for, and you might want to swap out girths once you purchase them. Another thing to think about is um, bareback pads with syrups. I know there's mixed um, feelings on these and, and opinions. Um, I personally am not a fan of, sorry about that. Uh, so I am personally not a fan of bareback pads with syrups on them. And the reason why is because bareback pads do not have any type of structure that keeps the pad from doing like a death roll or a death spin on the horse's back if you apply pressure in that stirrup. It's less likely to happen with a very light rider. However, even a few pounds of pressure, you know, if you test it out and you put a bareback pad on a horse and then you apply downward pressure on that stirrup, even a few pounds of pressure mm -hmm. on that mm -hmm. is going to cause that pad to spin and then if the rider feels like they're spinning this way, they're going to press into that stirrup more, which causes the pad to spin more. And then you just get in this downward cycle of, of the pad spinning and the, the rider likely falling off. Um, so I am not a huge fan of stirrups on pads for that reason. Another reason I am not a fan of the stirrups on the bareback pads is because um, when the rider applies pressure to this stirrup here, it doesn't distribute the weight all across the saddle and, and where a tree normally would be. What it does instead is it applies pressure pretty much to this here, where the that girth strap is at, because that's usually where the stirrups are attached, is to that girth strap. And then all the pressure is applied here over this tiny little area. Um, so that also concerns me for the comfort of the equine of whether or not that's a good decision. So I personally do not use bareback pads with stirrups. Um, I've seen them safely used with tiny kiddos, but they're usually like the bareback or treeless type saddles that have some type of structure here to help hold that piece of equipment over the horse's back and over the spine. The reason why our saddles or a well-fitted saddle doesn't spin when you apply pressure to the stirrup is because you have that tree that's underneath everything that is helping to hold the saddle in place. So be very cautious of the stirrups on here. Um, Again, mixed opinions, mixed feedback on it, but I've personally seen accidents happen from that. And I have the the saying, and if you've worked with me before, I have the saying that just because something's made doesn't necessarily mean that it should be used. And I don't think that these were ever made to harm horses or harm riders. I think it's a very good concept um, and idea, and I understand the thinking behind it. However, in true application, it doesn't always work out well. Um, so just be careful when you're choosing tack and equipment. 
So um, the other thing to, th or the, the, not the other thing, uh, the last thing to think about when you're looking at a bareback pad for purchase is the material. Um, so like I've said already, I, this is the brand I use. It's, it's the best friends bareback pad, not sponsored, just something I like using. Um, and this was after much trial and error. error. This is a suede material that is on top of here. Um, this one is kind of suede. This one is suede as well with some um, nice like faux sheepskin underneath. The bareback pads that I personally like using have a little bit of give so that they can kind of form to the horse's back. There's a pad that's similar to this where there's actually like some extra padding here um, and it looks nice and comfy when you go to order it but then when you put it on the horse's back it is almost like a board and it does not conform to the horse's back and I've noticed that it causes some rubbing here and here um, and it just it makes you kind of want to over tighten because it doesn't fit and shape around that horse's back here. So, um, you know, be cautious of the super fluffy ones and are they stiff or are they actually able to kind of fit to the horse's back? Um, if at all possible, I would highly recommend trying out a pad um, and a certain brand on the horse or horses that you're planning on buying the pad for before you actually purchase it. Um, if you have pads donated to your program and they're maybe not of the best um, anatomy or make, you know, kind of like this pad where the straps in the very front, it's very thin, um, you know, it's not even on both sides. I've seen them where they're not symmetrical. Um, maybe just say thank you so much for the donation and pass it on. Um, just because something's donated to you doesn't necessarily mean that you have to use it. So I hope this was a helpful video for you to help navigate the anatomy of a bareback pad and some things to think about if you do use bareback pads in your program. Um, so just a quick recap, make sure that the girth strap is at a good location, hopefully a little bit, you know, good distance behind here. Um, pay attention to how thick the girth strap is so that you hopefully have more area to distribute the, the pressure and the weight of that girth on the, the pad and on the um, horse's back and sides. Don't be afraid to swap the girths out if you need to. Um, be careful when you're using stirrups on a bareback pad. I would highly recommend you don't. Um, don't even use that option in, unless you've thought about all of the things that could happen and it's a very tiny rider and just be very careful. Um, and then also the what the pad is made of and the thickness and is it able to kind of form to the horse's back as well. So I hope these tips were helpful for you. Uh, let me know if there's a certain brand or make that you personally like and use. I use the Best Friend Bareback Pad. Um, this is the English style. They also have a Western style that's more like square. Um, I've used both of them and I really like them. These other ones, um, I'm not even sure what brand they are. I just pulled images because they hit the key points that I wanted to talk about. So I hope this was helpful um, and let me know in the comments if you have a brand you like or and your thoughts on stirrups on bareback pads, if you use bareback pads in your program, and I will see you on the next live instructor chat.